It begins as a dot of light in the sky. At first, harmless, a shooting star. But this one is no fleeting meteor. It's larger, faster, relentless. Humanity has always looked to the heavens with wonder. But what if the sky itself turned against us? Throughout Earth's history, asteroids have reshaped life on this planet. 66 million years ago, one strike ended the reign of the dinosaurs in a single afternoon. So, what if it happened again? What if a giant asteroid were on a collision course with Earth, and nothing could stop it? This is Doomsday Broadcast, and today, we face the unthinkable. What if a giant asteroid strikes Earth? It begins quietly. Far from the public eye, astronomers sweep the night sky, tracking near-Earth objects. At first, it seems like nothing more than another rock drifting through the void. But the calculations don't lie. The object is massive, nearly 10 kilometers across. A mountain of stone and iron racing toward Earth at 20 kilometers per second. Its potential energy is beyond comprehension. On impact, it would unleash the power of billions of nuclear weapons, an extinction-level event. The numbers are checked, then checked again, each confirmation tightening the noose. There is no chance of a near miss, no miracle deflection. The asteroid is locked on course. The discovery cannot be contained. Scientists alert governments. Word spreads through agencies like NASA, ESA, and international observatories. Behind closed doors, world leaders convene, presidents and generals demand answers. Is there a weapon? A rocket? A desperate solution? The reply is always the same. No technology on Earth can stop it. No shield, no missile, no second chance. For humanity, only one fact remains. The countdown has already begun, and the only certainty is impact. The news cannot be contained. At first, whispers spread through scientific circles, then leaks appear online. Within hours, the truth is everywhere. A giant asteroid is coming, and impact is certain. Panic erupts. Stock markets collapse in a single day. Banks shut their doors. Supermarkets are emptied as shelves are stripped bare. Fuel stations run dry. Supply chains grind to a halt. Across the globe, fear takes hold. Some turn to faith, gathering in churches and temples. Others turn to violence, looting and rioting in the streets. Conspiracy theories explode, drowning out truth with denial and rage. Governments declare martial law, troops patrolling the streets to maintain fragile order. Yet with each passing day, fear spreads faster than control. At last, the projections narrow. The asteroid will strike near the Gulf of Mexico. For millions, there is nowhere to run. No hope of escape. Deep underground, bunkers seal shut, shelters for presidents, billionaires, and generals. The rest of humanity waits above, powerless beneath the falling sky. Civilization now stands on the edge of annihilation. The countdown has begun. Then, it happens. The asteroid tears into the atmosphere at 45,000 miles per hour. Friction turns the air into fire. The sky glows with a blazing trail as a fireball brighter than the sun streaks overhead. In seconds, the heavens themselves become a weapon, burning the Earth from above. Moments later, the asteroid strikes. The collision is instant, but the effects are endless. The planet convulses violently. The blast shatters the crust with unimaginable force, sending shockwaves deep into the mantle. The energy released is greater than all nuclear weapons ever built. Combined, mountains are vaporized in an instant. Oceans boil away at their edges. A scar is carved into the planet, a crater over 150 kilometers wide and several kilometers deep. Molten rock is thrown skyward. Entire regions vanish in the first moments. The devastation doesn't stop at ground zero. 
Shockwaves race outward, circling the globe. Skyscrapers collapse. Bridges splinter. Earthquakes ripple across continents, toppling cities thousands of miles away. Entire nations feel the fury within minutes. And yet, as catastrophic as this moment is, it is only the beginning. From the heart of the impact, the oceans rise in fury. Megatsunamis, some taller than skyscrapers, erupt outward. Walls of water hundreds of meters high tear across the seas, moving with the speed of jetliners. Entire coastlines tremble before they are erased. Within hours, the oceans become weapons. Coastlines vanish beneath walls of water. New York, Miami, Rio de Janeiro, Tokyo, Sydney. Cities that took centuries to build are swallowed in moments. Entire nations disappear, their histories drowned forever. The survivors cling to rooftops, mountaintops, fragments of land that will not hold for long. Hundreds of millions perish in a single day, swept away before the world can even comprehend what has happened. The waves do not discriminate. Rich or poor, powerful or powerless, the sea claims them all. But even this is not the deadliest consequence. The oceans have consumed millions. Yet what falls from the skies will soon consume billions. The oceans may rage, but the sky delivers the deadliest blow. From the impact site, trillions of tons of molten rock and pulverized earth are hurled upward, piercing the atmosphere, thrown into space before falling back down like a deadly rain. As this burning debris re-enters, it turns the entire sky into a furnace. The atmosphere itself ignites. Across the globe, forests erupt in flames, fields blaze, cities catch fire. Within hours, firestorms sweep continents. The night sky glows red, illuminated by a hellish canopy of falling embers. Smoke and ash choke the air, blotting out the stars. Entire regions burn alive. Animals flee in vain, suffocated by heat and smoke. Human lungs fill with soot as survivors struggle to breathe in a world ablaze. There is no refuge. Homes, highways, and entire forests collapse into ash. The crackle of flames becomes the universal sound of the dying earth. Civilization itself begins to disintegrate, its monuments reduced to cinders. But the greatest danger is not fire. It is what follows the flames. For once the world is burned, the skies will darken. And in that endless darkness comes the true extinction. When the flames fade, the world is left beneath a poisoned sky. The asteroid's impact has thrown billions of tons of ash, soot, and dust into the upper atmosphere. Slowly, this shroud of debris spreads, circling the globe, sealing Earth in a cloak of death. The sun disappears. Day turns to endless night. What little light pierces through is weak, dim, and cold. Temperatures plummet. Within weeks, the world freezes, crops wither and die, fields that once fed nations become barren wastelands, harvests fail, livestock starve, oceans acidify. The chain of life snaps link by link, ecosystems collapsing under the weight of darkness. A year later, Earth is locked in an impact winter colder than the last ice age. For humanity, the struggle is immediate and merciless. Food vanishes. Governments crumble as nations dissolve into chaos. Starvation sweeps the globe. Those who survive the flames now face famine, disease, and cold that seeps into their bones. Desperate communities turn against each other. Wars erupt over scraps of food, drops of fuel, fragments of hope. Civilization fractures, splintering into isolated pockets of survival. The world enters a new dark age. A frozen night that stretches on, not for days or months, but for years. And in that darkness, humanity teeters on the brink of extinction.
66 million years ago, an asteroid ended the reign of the dinosaurs. In a single afternoon, three quarters of all life on Earth was erased. Now, history begins to repeat itself. As the endless darkness of impact winter stretches on, ecosystems collapse. Forests fall silent, oceans empty of life. Skies once filled with birds now hang in stillness. The food chain unravels. Plants wither and die. Grazers starve. Predators vanish. Even insects, once thought indestructible, struggle to survive in the cold and dark. Humanity fights against the inevitable. Cities are abandoned, technology fades, and the memory of civilization slips away. Survivors fracture into tribes, scavenging for scraps, warring over what little remains. Books turn to ash, knowledge to whispers, progress to dust. Famine deepens, disease spreads unchecked. Each generation grows weaker, and in time, a planet emptied of its dominant species. The age of humanity ends. Centuries pass beneath a shroud of silence. Slowly, the skies begin to clear. The dust settles, the sun pierces the gloom, and the world stirs again, though it is forever changed. The earth is colder, emptier, scarred by fire and ice. Yet even in devastation, life returns. Forests creep across barren land, moss and ferns cling to stone, and the oceans carve new coastlines. The planet heals in slow motion. From the ashes, new species emerge, fragile, unfamiliar, shaped by the catastrophe that reset the clock of evolution. Humanity, however, is gone. Our cities lie in ruins, our monuments crumble, our voices silenced. Fossils remain, buried deep in stone, fragments of a civilization that once ruled the earth. Future life may uncover our bones and broken artifacts, but our stories, languages, and dreams are lost. The earth survives, but without us. The question is not if an asteroid will strike again, it is when. Today, scientists track thousands of near-Earth objects, but for every rock we see, there may be others, hidden in the darkness. Humanity's survival depends on preparation, building defenses, developing technology, watching the skies. Because when the next rock comes, it may already be too late. This was Doomsday Broadcast. Subscribe to prepare for the unthinkable. And remember, the end is always closer than it seems.